my look and um, thanks for coming over here and hanging out with me and chatting with me while I get ready hey Jesus loves you so let's start off with these brows I'm not big on the strongest heaviest brows because as you can see I have a delicate face, so I don't want to overwhelm myself, but um, I do like bold looks, so I am using my um, Brow MPV by Fenty Beauty in medium brown. So let us just get started on our topic of conversation today. The holidays are upon us. And that is the season when women feel compelled to be everything to everybody. We burn ourselves out. And then we start being the biggest um, Scrooges of everybody. You know, we're like, I hate Christmas. It's just a big shopping nightmare. There's huge crowds everywhere. You know, this is not my world. See, that's about all the difference I really want, but I'm gonna fill it in just because I am a mature lady, which means that the way I see it, it might look scandalous. Sometimes when you get a little older, you think something looks good and you're missing the details that the young eyes around you see. And you know what, you guys? Y'all don't tell mature folks, you know, your lipstick, your lip um, liner is on your, is up to your nose and you don't have any lipstick on. You don't tell us these things. You feel like, well, if Big Mom, you know, thinks she looks good, I'm not gonna tell her any different. I just want you to know you're wrong for that. It's Christmas time. Don't let your big mama go out on the streets looking like a clown. She is doing that makeup like she did when her vision was a whole lot better. But back on the topic. So this Christmas, don't be a Scrooge. All you got to do is less. If nobody wants to cook, you know, because it's like, as women, we cook, we, we are Christmas. Okay, we bring Christmas. We are the ones that go out and shop for the gifts. We are the ones that wrap the gifts. We are the one that cook the Christmas dinner. We are the ones that buy the Christmas decorations. You know, I'm beginning to understand why women are so salty on Christmas, you know? And you know, the man just goes out and gets us one luxury gift. Merry Christmas, baby. And then after all the kids go to sleep, if you have a man in your life, well, Christmas night is stage time. So you still working. A woman's work is never done. Oh, and after everybody eats that Christmas dinner that you made, guess who goes and cleans up the house afterwards? Yes, that would be us. And we throw away all the... um the boxes from the toys and we buy all the batteries and we try not to trip over all this stuff that's that's us that's that, that that's that's what christmas means to us you know if you aren't careful but i'm gonna tell you something there is another christmas yes 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 there is another christmas to all you grinches out there there is that real Whoville Christmas when you don't have anything, you know? There's that Whoville Christmas. 
There's that Christmas where, you know, you can go to church on Christmas. You can serve Christmas dinner at the mission and eat with the um, homeless. Make sure you've been given that mission money for the food. Don't go getting free food just because you helping out. Um, the, the mission's job is to feed folks who are hungry, not folks who trying to... Um, you're getting something from feeding people at the mission. You're getting your soul back. Have you gone to the store? They got shoes. They got bags. They don't have souls for sale. You got to... So that mission is giving you something. Make sure you give that mission way more than you, than you eat. So I figure... $300 should be your minimum donation to the mission for the year if you're going down and serving food, you know. Make sure that you got them like that. So um, that's the thing you could do. Take your kids there. You know, your kids, your spoiled brat kids that after they use those toys one time will never want to use them again and they just become trash that you have to yell at them and um, break the law by beating those little brats and making them clean up their toys with the windows closed so the police don't get you and they don't become foster kids, you know, because um, if your kids are black, as soon as they get 16, there's white supremacists out on the street stalking them with AK-47s. You got to beat your kids. Your kids got to know how to fight. They got to know how to run. They got to know how to hide because it's war in this world today. But back on the topic. Of Christmas, you know, so, you know, I can understand why we women are Grinches, bottom line. But in any event, so when your kids are out there looking at toys and all they're thinking about is what they want and what's going to make them happy, you know, go and buy toys for somebody who doesn't have toys. And and make it be toys that your kids would have got. So if you one of them rich biddies or one of them bad credit biddies that go into debt to make sure your kids get a good Christmas so you got 10 and 20 gifts underneath the tree, you're the house where all the broke kids whose mamas um, got good credit go to play with the toys, you know. Um, tell your kids this year, you would normally get 10 toys, but we're going to give away some of your toys. So you pick out the toys that you would want for Christmas. You'll get your toys. You'll get some toys for Christmas, one or two. But we're going to give toys to people who wouldn't have toys. And on Christmas Day, instead of gathering underneath your Christmas tree, go out singing carols and give those toys to those children who would have been happy with their family eating beans, rice, and tamales. I'm in Southern California, so that's what Christmas is. We have tamales for Christmas here, homemade tamales. And if you ever come here and get tamales for Christmas, oh, my goodness. I tell you, I think it would catch on all around the world. But in any, but in any event, you know, start a tradition of being like Jesus. Jesus came here on Christmas to give his life for us. That was the sole reason the man came down here, was to die for us. He didn't have no other reason. He didn't come down here to kick it with the 12 apostles. He didn't come down here to heal the sick. He didn't come down here to perform a whole bunch of miracles. He just did that so that y'all would know his name which is Jesus, you know, your kids need to know his name. And then on Christmas Day, um, go to church. If your church doesn't have service, because like I've done a video on all these hell-bound Christians, if your church does not have a service on Christmas, if your church does not understand that Christmas is not a holiday for the church, that Christmas is a working day for the church, then go to a church that has service. Even if you have to go to a Catholic church and be at a Christmas mass, it's Christmas. Go there. Worship God. Give him praise. Thank him for dying on the cross for you. Thank him for leaving heaven. If you ever been to heaven and you experience the joy and jubilance of heaven, you would never for a moment 
want to come back to this raggedy, stinky, broke down, evil, full earth. Not even for a second. Y'all don't understand. That man left paradise and came down to this crap with these people full of the devil, looking him in the face, fully demonized, on their way to hell, talking smack to Jesus. The person who said, let there be light. And guess what? There was light all over the earth. Okay, not like right where he was, a little night light, not a little candle light. And that light is still here today. It's called daytime. Did you ever make daytime? Can you imagine talking to somebody who makes daytime and you up in their face telling them, you know, I'm going to kill you. You don't know who I am. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Sadducee. I'm a bad man. You know, I'm going to get you. I still, I do. You know, can you imagine what a peon that is, you know? But, um, you know, that's what happened. So I would suggest just a thought. Bring those things into Christmas and um, make them kids help you clean up the house after the Christmas. Make them wash the dishes with you. Make them put away the toys. Make them take down the tree with you so then it's not all on you at least and have them folks go shopping with you including your husband at least let him go to the register and um carry the gifts that you aren't hiding because you don't want him to know you bought them those ones i understand he can't go on that trip but you know whatever you can do like that so i hope this blessed you Jesus is the reason for the season, but I do understand that you women, you know, and then you got to get your hair done. You got to go on a diet before uh, the feast, although you know you're going to gain it all back that same day. Christmas can be a trial and journey unless, unless you follow these rules of bringing back Jesus to the season. Give gifts to somebody else. Give a meal to the homeless. Go to church on Christmas. Or go to Mass if you can't go to church. Even if you're not um, Catholic or Lutheran or something like that. Somebody's having Presbyterians. Somebody's having a Christmas service on Christmas Day. And it won't take that long. And let that be a part of your holiday. You know, add Christmas caroling into your thing. You don't need a whole bunch of folks. Three folks to do. That's your family. Get out on the street and sing Christmas carols to your neighbors. You know? You don't have to be on key either. So, there, there it is. Jesus loves you. And I love you with all the Jesus in me. I'm real happy with them brows. Put a little of this um, black powder on the tail. Up until I got this. Uh, brushes that one. Versus up until I got this pencil, which is my quick routine, all I've ever used is powder because I'm, I'm not blessed with the, the browiest brows. Sometimes my brows are thick, and most of the times they aren't. But that tail, you know, you got to put that bad boy back up in the house. And my little benefit, I bought this um, a year ago. I've been using the same one for a year, and it still has stuff in it. So, um... I'm not throwing it out. I feel like my brows, I can't catch anything from my brows. It's not my eyelashes. So there it is. Step here. Just to pop them up a little bit more. Yes, that looks good. I think I like this one a lot better than this one, but um, that's not going to make me make any more changes. It's good enough, you know. Jesus loves you, and I love you with all the Jesus in me. Be blessed, beautiful.